Hey everybody, CatSync TV. And have you ever pressed the same button over and over again on a calculator just to see what happens? Of course you have. When you press sign over and over again, the numbers get smaller and smaller and eventually go to zero. But when you press cosine over and over again, you get to this number. We call this process fixed point iteration. And this is the topic of today's video. But first, please do subscribe to this channel for more cultural content coming out regularly. And please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. A fixed point of a function is a value that is mapped to itself by the function. That is, f of x equals x. Graphically, the fixed points are wherever a function crosses the diagonal y equals x. For sine, we see that it crosses at x equals zero. For cosine, it crosses here. x squared has two fixed points, at zero and at one. Fixed point iteration is a method of computing fixed points by repeatedly applying the function over and over again, much like repeatedly pressing the button on a calculator. Formally, we define a sequence where each value is the function mapped to the previous value. The resulting sequence may or may not converge, but when it does, it arrives at a fixed point. We can turn the formal definition into a program using the functional programming language Haskell. We take a function, an initial value, and apply it n times. The larger the value of n, the more times we apply the function, and the closer we should get to the fixed point. Let's try it with cosine and an initial value of 2. This is what we get after 10 iterations, after 50, after 100. We're already converging on cosine's unique fixed point. Let's try it with sine. 10 iterations, 50, a hundred, a thousand. As mentioned earlier, the fixed point is zero, so we should see the value getting closer to zero at greater iterations. And it is getting smaller each time, but rather slowly compared to cosine. Remember this, it will be important later. We can also view these iterations graphically. Here is what it looks like for cosine with 25 iterations. And now for sine. Now not all fixed point iterations converge. Consider the two fixed points of x squared. For values above 1, the iterations just get bigger and bigger. While between 0 and 1, they get further from 1, but closer to 0. If we flip it to get the square root function, we have the same fixed points at 0 and 1, but the opposite behavior. Iterations move further away from 0, but closer to 1. When the values move away from a fixed point, we call it repelling. But when they get closer, we say the fixed point is an attractor. So how do we know if a fixed point is attracting or repelling? The key is to zoom in and look in the neighborhood of the fixed point. Going a little bit in either direction, we can make a rectangle whose corners are the value of the function. If it's horizontal, it's likely to converge. If it's vertical, it will diverge. We can also draw a diagonal through the rectangle and its slope is the derivative of the function at the fixed point. If the absolute value of the derivative is less than 1, it will probably converge. If, however, the derivative is greater than 1, or the slope greater than 45 degrees, it will most certainly diverge. These observations can be expressed more formally using the Bonnach fixed point theorem, named for mathematician Stefan Bonnach. For a function f and a constant c between 0 and 1, we say the function is a contraction mapping if it has this property. In other words, it is bringing points closer and closer together. The Bonnach fixed point theorem states that for any metric space like the real numbers, or a continuous range thereof, a contraction mapping on that space will have a fixed point. Moreover, that fixed point is an attractor, and any iterated sequence from any starting point will converge to it if the absolute value of the derivative is less than 1. In the case of cosine, the derivative is less than 1 at the fixed point, thus it obeys the Banach fixed point theorem. It is a contraction mapping between minus 1 and 1, but quickly converges from all points. Another function where this works is exponential decay, where the derivative of the fixed point is again less than 1. Although it converges from all points, it is only a contraction mapping for all positive values of x. Now let's look at the sine function. Its fixed point is at 0, but its derivative there is exactly 1. So it does not conform to the Banach fixed point theorem and converges very slowly. 
We can also look at functions with multiple fixed points. Take 3 times cosine x. It has 3 fixed points. Two of them have a derivative greater than 1, so they are repelling. But this one has a derivative less than 1, so it's an attractor. And because the function is bounded, all values will converge. We can define this function as 3 cos in Haskell and run it through our fixed point iterator. It quickly converges to the attractor value. For x squared, the fixed point at 1 has a derivative of 2, so it is repelling. But the derivative of the fixed point at 0 is 0. So all values between 0 and 1 will converge. Here we see how a repelling fixed point can send values either towards infinity or towards an attractor. But what if we turn this function on its head like this? This new function also has two fixed points, but the absolute value of both derivatives are greater than 1. To the left and right of the points, the iterations will go to infinity, but in between they will just bounce around between one and the other chaotically. <laughs> but that's a story for another video. Do you have thoughts about fixed point iterations? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com. And please subscribe to CatSynth TV. You are watching CatSynth TV.